more than 10,000 aircraft, 2,700 show planes, and a record 642,000 spectators. Little wonder the Experimental Aircraft Association's Air Venture Show is known as the world's largest aviation celebration. For the third consecutive year, Airshow Stuff, in collaboration with This Is Flight, takes a look back at the best of the Air Venture flying displays. But before we get started in earnest, here are some of the highlights of the 2019 show. We start, as usual with these programmes, with a brief look at the mass warbird arrivals, one of the unique features of Air Venture each year. In this case, we're looking at the simultaneous arrivals of two large formations, one comprising 32 T-34 Mentors and the other of 14 T-28 Trojans on the Monday of the show. And indeed, we'll see more from both of these aircraft types later on in the programme as we continue our look through the flying displays. first of our true air show acts is the Twin Tigers and it's impossible to talk about this act without mentioning the tragic death of one of the team pilots Mark Novoshevsky in January 2020. Little Mark as he was known was an airline pilot for Southwest and the 2013 US advanced aerobatic champion. He flew the Twin Tigers routine with fellow Southwest pilot Mark Sorensen, Big Mark as he was known, but tragically the accident also took the life of Nathan, Mark Sorensen's son. The Twin Tigers are truly one of the most unique and innovative airshow acts on the circuit and the airshow industry is much poorer for Mark Novoshevsky's loss. The aircraft the team are flying is the Yak-55M, a Russian-built single-seat aerobatic aircraft that made its first flight in 1981. And at the risk of being presumptuous, I imagine the question that's probably on your lips is what happens if I take two of them, weld them together, and fit a jet engine underneath? Well, if I was right, and not alone, Jeff Bourbon had exactly the same thought which led him to build this rather extraordinary machine, the Yak-110. The idea came about in 2013. The plane finally made its air show debut at the Gunfighter Skies Air Show in 2018, and it flew at Oshkosh for the first time the same year. Fitted underneath the central section of the wing between the two fuselages is a General Electric J85 turbojet engine 
and that combined with the two M14Ps gives the AK110 a power to weight ratio of greater than 1 to 1. Continuing on the theme of dual fuselage designs, this aircraft is the XP82 twin Mustang. And this one isn't a wacky experiment, it is in fact a prototype F-82, a long-range escort fighter which served operationally from 1946 until 1953. This particular example made its first post-restoration flight in January 2019, and it's currently the only flying twin Mustang in the world. Indeed, we'll be seeing rather a lot of the Mustang in all its guises over the course of this film, as Air Venture 2019 featured a reunion of Mustangs in honour of the World War II fighter race Clarence Bud Anderson. On the Thursday of the show, no fewer than 18 Mustangs took to the air at the same time, albeit not in a single formation, uh, but that included B, C, D and H models. So enjoy for a few moments the wonderful sound of 12 Mustangs in the air at the same time. We move next into a solo display by P-51C Mustang Lopes Hope. The P-51 of course is an aircraft that most will be very familiar with. It entered service in 1942, more than 15,000 built, and it served with some 29 nations, the last of which the Dominican Republic didn't retire the Mustang from active service until 1984. It was actually born out of a British order for a new high-performance fighter aircraft and less than 15 weeks after the contract was signed, North American produced the NA-73X, the prototype of what went on to become the P-51. It was a design that had much promise, but the aircraft was woefully underpowered, particularly at high altitude. This was rectified by replacing the Allison V1710 engine with a Rolls-Royce Merlin, and what resulted was one of the ultimate fighting machines of the Piston era. Little wonder Hermann Goering, commander of the Luftwaffe, once said that when he saw Mustangs over Berlin, he knew the war was over. But what the Mustang is to the Americans, the Spitfire is to the British, another superb Merlin-powered fighter. This is a Mark IX Spitfire from the Texas Flying Legends Museum. The Spitfire didn't have the range of the Mustang, it wasn't much good as an escort fighter, but it was an exceptional air-to-air -air combat machine with the highest kill ratio of any fighter in the Battle of Britain. Despite that, the work was hazardous to say the least. The average age of a Spitfire pilot during the Battle of Britain was just 20 and their average life expectancy was just four weeks. And now these two icons of the Second World War unite for a combined fly past. And here we have a P-51D Mustang leading three modern-day combat aircraft. The 
the A-10C Thunderbolt, F-22A Raptor and F-35A Lightning as part of the US Air Force Heritage Flight. With this, we move from one of Air Ventures themes to another. 2019 was the year of the fighter, and so it was extremely appropriate to see three of the US Air Force's four solo jet demonstrations at the show. Turn to the first of the fast jet solo demonstrations, the F-35A Lightning II in its first season as a full demonstration team. In from the right at the slow, showing off the aircraft's exceptional high alpha performance. Sadly, the aerobatic box at Oshkosh limits most fast jets to a non-aerobatic mini demonstration, but still an extremely powerful showing from the latest fighter to enter the US Air Force's inventory. We continue with the A-10C Thunderbolt, one of the ultimate close air support aircraft in service today. It's a distinctive looking plane with its straight wings and its two externally mounted General Electric TF-34GE100A engines, but it packs quite a punch, no fewer than 11 hard points on this aircraft, four under each wing and a further three under the fuselage. Plus, of course, its distinctive nose-mounted 30mm Avenger rotary cannon. Unlike the Lightning and the Raptor, the A-10 has been cleared to fly its display closer to the crowd than most fast jets, and so it is actually performing its full aerobatic demonstration. The A-10 now joins a pair of warbirds for another take on the Heritage flight, this time one P-51D and one AD-1 Sky Raider.
Airshow audiences in 2019 have been enjoying a lengthened heritage flight profile, up from three passes to five, giving the crowd even more opportunities to enjoy this extremely unique spectacle, which is rarely seen anywhere outside of the United States. We'll be seeing more from the US Air Force later in the programme, not least the Raptor that we glimpsed earlier. And we're not done with the Mustang yet either. But first, a reminder that you can see uncut, uninterrupted videos of many of the individual performances from Air Venture 2019 and dozens of other air shows across North America right here on the Air Show Stuff YouTube channel. And if you're enjoying this film, then you might also like This Is Flight's Airshow Dispatches series, bringing you the very best action from airshows right around the world. The first two series are available to watch completely free at thisisflight.net. Well, we're back at AirVenture 2019 as we continue our review of the star-studded aerial display. And now we turn to a trio of formation teams. First up, a relatively new team flying six T-28 Trojans is the aptly named Trojan Thunder. Almost instantly, the two solo pilots break away from the formation. They now approach for an opposing pass. The T-28 was designed in the late 1940s to replace the T-6 Texan in US service. It also served with 27 other nations, uh, in many of which it was known as the Fennec. team end their show with a bomb burst and we turn to the second of our formation teams, the Rocky Mountain Renegades. They're flying six Vans RV series kit planes and they start their show in a similar style to Trojan Thunder with a break straight into opposing passes. team mix formation and opposing manoeuvres with solo aerobatics by a Giles 202 designed by Richard Giles. It has a top speed of 220 knots, a roll rate of more than 400 degrees per second and it can take up to plus or minus 10 times the force of gravity. The Giles family of aircraft was one of the aircraft anniversaries being honoured at this year's show. The single seat Giles 200 made its first flight in 1994 followed by the twin seat Giles 202 the year after. In 2002, the Giles family was developed further into the MX2 and the MXS Racer of Red Bull Air Race fame, where it was flown by Matt Hall, Nigel Lamb and Mika Brajot. But back to the RV series, and the great thing about these aeroplanes is that they show just how accessible aviation can be. It's an aircraft you can buy in bits and put together in your garage, yet it's still powerful, aerobatic and great fun to fly. The third of the formation teams is Team Oracle, formed of Sean D. Tucker in his Challenger 3 and Jesse Panzer in the Extra 300L. Sean retired from his immensely successful solo aerobatic career at the end of 2018 in favour of setting up a formation team, 
and 2019 was his last full year flying the Challenger 3, which is due to go on display in the National Air and Space Museum in 2021. Both aircraft now pull up in a loose line abreast formation. The airspeed bleeds away and just as they reach the top, they're going to kick in a bootful of rudder for synchronized stall turns. Another formation act of a sort, but not from an established team this time, as we bring to life the Experimental Aircraft Association superhero character, Avior. The show follows a young Eagles pilot transforming into Avior before joining his teammates in an aerial combat scenario in his RV-8A. Avior in this scenario is brought to life by Joe Shetterly and the other parts are played by Nathan Hammond, Greg Shetterly, Jeff Shetterly and Billy Worth. Avior was gifted to the EAA by the Stan Lee Foundation, Stan Lee being the legendary superhero creator of course, and is the main character in the EAA's aviation themed comic book, aims to inspire a new generation into the world of aviation. One act unique to air venture to another now with this aerial firefighting demonstration. Of course, something that's very much in the forefront of our minds at the moment, given certain world events over the past few months. First to arrive is the Aero Commander 500, which supervises and coordinates the entire operation. And next up is the arrival of the first of the big guns, namely a CL215 with almost 5,000 litres of water on board. The Air Tractor 802 Fireboss may be smaller, but it can still carry an impressive 3,000 litres of water, and it's a very popular choice with firefighting agencies around the world a type I've seen in action fighting real fire several times. Finally, the largest of the trio, a C-130 Hercules, fitted with a modular airborne firefighting system with a capacity for over 1,100 litres of water or fire retardant. Yeah, 
his left uh, drop here, and uh, line is clear. Break, break, with an IC, air attack, 95. One of the unique features of Air Venture 2019 is that it featured all three of the North American jet aerobatic teams. Not with full displays, but still an immensely impressive achievement for the show organisers. And here we see the Canadian Forces Snowbirds dropping in with their spare jet, which is of course a CT-114 Tutor. Monday saw a fly past by the US Navy Blue Angels with their FA-18 Hornets, quite possibly the Blue Angels' last Oshkosh appearance in the Legacy Hornet, unless they make a similar drop-in to the 2020 show. because of course the team will be transitioning to the Super Hornet at the end of the 2020 season. And on Thursday, the US Air Force Thunderbirds made a brief appearance as well. passed by just the diamond formation and they will then be rejoined by the two solo pilots for two more manoeuvres in the full delta formation. going to canter through some of the regular air venture showcases now and a brief look at a trio of British warbirds to begin with. We saw the Mustang earlier but this is the de Havilland Mosquito and Fairy Firefly. Nicknames the Wooden Wonder, the Mosquito first flew in 1940 and it was used in a number of roles including as a daytime tactical bomber, a night bomber, a pathfinder, a day and night fighter, a fighter bomber, a maritime strike aircraft, a photo reconnaissance aircraft, and it was even used by the British Overseas Airways Corporation as a transport plane for small high-value loads to and from neutral countries through enemy-controlled airspace. Then forward into the jet age, we see a gaggle of Czech-built L-39 Albatross jets Originally designed as a military training aircraft to replace the L-29 Delphine, the L-39 has become extremely popular on the airshow circuit. It's operated by teams such as the Patriots Jet Team, Hopper Flight, the Baltic Bees, Sparflect, Team Rus, as well as the now defunct Heavy Metal Jet Team and Breitling Jet Team. Plus, in military hands, the L-39 equipped the Slovak national aerobatic team, Biel Albatrossi, from 1991 until 2001, and an excellent team they were. Now we see three L-39s with their predecessor, the L-29 that I mentioned earlier. An altogether rarer type now, the A4 Skyhawk, 
Another plane with airshow pedigree though, not just with the US Navy Blue Angels from 1974 until 1986, but also the Singapore Black Knights team from 1994 until 2000, and most impressively of all, the Kiwi Red team from New Zealand from 1988 until 1990. And Kiwi Red used to fly six ship formation barrel rolls while two of the Skyhawks were actually plugged into each other as if performing buddy-buddy refueling. Quite an incredible feat. And now onto the Soviet Union with the Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-17. It's Klimov VK-1F engine producing that very charismatic long afterburner flame. The MiG-17 has an extremely interesting history, so we'll talk about that further later in the programme when we see the aircraft fly again at night on that occasion, and that afterburner flame will be pretty much all you can see. The largest aircraft in the bomber section was one of the world's two flying B-29 superfortresses, plus a pair of B-25 Mitchells. The show also paid tribute to the 75th anniversary of the D-Day landings, Operation Neptune, as it was officially known, with nine Dakotas performing the flypast. Many of these had just returned from the Dax over Normandy event in Europe where they'd reenacted the famous cross-channel flight in a huge formation of over two dozen Dakotas escorted by various other types including Expeditors, Texans, Spitfires and Mustangs. And I can tell you, seeing the sky fill with so many tiny dots as the formation approached was a pretty unbelievable sight that gave a tiny insight at least into the scale of the operation itself on the 6th of June 1944. It's worth just pausing to reflect on the scale of that operation. On D-Day itself, the Allies landed some 156,000 troops in Normandy, including 73,000 Brits, 59,000 Americans, 21,000 Canadians, and 200 more from various other nations, predominantly France. Of these, 23,000 were brought in by air on 832 C-47 Dakotas, just like these ones. We continue to honour the past with the next act, the bait a slightly different period with a pair of US Navy legacy flights. First up, the sole airworthy FJ-4 Fury joins an EA-18G Growler. The basic design for the FJ-4 started out with the F-86 Sabre. That design was then navalized to create the FJ-2 and FJ-3 Fury, and then subsequently updated to create the FJ-4. It served from 1954 until the late 1960s. Over 
The EA-18G Growler is an electronic warfare version of the FA-18F Super Hornet, brought in to replace the EA-6B Growler from 2009 in US Navy service. And it's also used in small numbers by the Royal Australian Air Force. And in this separate legacy flight, a T2 Buckeye leads a pair of T-45 Goshawks, two generations of naval training aircraft here. The T2 flew with the US Navy from 1959 until 2008. It was gradually replaced by the T-45 from 1991. The T-45 is a modified licensed produced version of the BAE Hawk Mark 60. And the Hawk is the best-selling advanced jet trainer aircraft ever produced, as well as being a very common sight on the airshow circuit, where it's flown by the Red Arrows, the Saudi Hawks, the Midnight Hawks, Surya Kiran, as well as several defunct teams such as Jupiter Blue and Panji Wither. The T-45, though, differs from those standard Hawks you might be more familiar with. In order to facilitate carrier operations, the airframe and landing gear have been strengthened, the horizontal and vertical stabilizers have been enlarged, and an arrestor hook and tow bar have been added. The arrestor hook occupies the space previously home to the air brake, so that in turn has been moved up to the sides of the fuselage, just forward of the tail, and you might catch a glimpse of it as the aircraft turns away from us here. Sticking with the US Navy and the arrival and departure of the F-35C Lightning gave us a rare chance to see their latest fighter in action. This is the variant of the F-35 designed for arrested landings on aircraft carriers and so it features enlarged wings for better low speed performance with foldable tips to reduce its size when parked on the carrier deck. Like the T-45, the landing gear has been strengthened as well, and if you were watching very carefully when the aircraft took off, you might have spotted that it had twin-wheel nose gear, uh, which is another way in which it differs from the other variants of the Lightning. We're going to rejoin the fast jets of the US Air Force now. We saw them flying demonstrations and heritage flights earlier, but now we turn to the evening portions of the show, and here they are again performing low approaches on the Monday. This jet noise brings us rather seamlessly to that one solo demonstration we missed earlier, which is the F-22 Raptor. The 
the Raptor was, by quite some margin, the world's first operational fifth-generation fighter. Primarily an air superiority fighter, the Raptor is a truly multi-role machine with capabilities including electronic warfare and ground attack. It flew for the first time in 1997, didn't enter service until 2005, and the last of 187 aircraft were delivered in 2012. The Raptor's top speed is Mach 2.25 and it can supercruise at Mach 1.82, that is without the use of afterburners. With half a fuel load, the Raptor also has a thrust to weight ratio of greater than 1 to 1 when using its full reheated power, with its two Pratt & Whitney F119 PW100 engines producing a combined 70,000 pounds of thrust. One final heritage flight, and this is quite a special one, as the Raptor joins up with no fewer than three P-51D Mustangs. It's worth a reminder at this point that if you are enjoying the programme, you can see uncut videos of most of these performances and others that we haven't been able to feature here on the Airshow Stuff YouTube channel. You can also find similar coverage from previous editions of Airventure. And over at This Is Flight, we produce videos like this one from dozens of airshows across North America, Europe, Asia and Australasia as part of our Airshow Dispatches series. The second series recently wrapped up and it includes shows such as Barksdale, Festeral Cell in Spain, Aero Baltic in Poland, the Shuttleworth Military Air Show in the UK and the Edinburgh Air Show in Australia. So if you enjoyed this, please do head over to thisisflight.net and check it out. But back to Air Venture 2019 and we continue now with the night shows. First up, Julie Clark in her T-34 Mentor. This was Julie's last Oshkosh appearance as she retired from air shows at the end of the 2019 season, flying her final show at Aviation Nation in Las Vegas. The former airline pilot, Julie began flying aerobatics in 1980. She now flies the T-34 Mentor Free Spirit in a graceful display which features coloured wingtip smoke during the day and sparklers during the evening, as you can see here. One last hurrah for the Mustang, courtesy of the Class of 45 team. This display sees a P-51D paired with an F4U4 Corsair for an energetic and sophisticated pairs display.
They'll now break into a short routine of opposing and solo passes. Four more classic aircraft this time, all 86 Texans from the Aeroshell aerobatic team. Formed in 1984 as the North American aerobatic team, Aeroshell today is one of the foremost civilian air show acts in North America. They perform a very busy schedule of shows every year, both during the day and in the evening. What I really love about this team is that when you watch the formations closely, the formation keeping is absolutely rock solid. Very, very impressive flying. Watch now for the downwards bomb burst. And the two wingmen turn back towards show centre for opposing loops. Check this out for a slick rejoin. The aircraft fly those opposing loops, then twist through 90 degrees on the down line and rejoin pretty swiftly back in formation. Earlier on I promised the nighttime return of the MiG-17 Fresco and here it is in the hands of Randy Ball. I did say that afterburner would stand out and it does. The Russians began developing lethal jet fighters in the late 1940s. That was after the British government authorised the sale of Rolls-Royce Neen jet engines to the Soviet Union. Stalin himself was astonished, he's said to have asked, what fool would sell us his secrets? Well, Sir Stafford Cripps was that fool, and within months the Russians had reverse engineered the mean and were producing hundreds of MiG-15s which suddenly popped up in the Korean War and outclassed anything the West had to offer. The MiG-17 is an advanced development of that, which entered service in 1952. And now the MiG races the shockwave jet truck to conclude its demonstration.
Now, you may recall that we ended last year's Air Venture Roundup in very much the same way we started this one, with a tribute to a team that had since lost one of its pilots, Redline and John Fokker. But luckily, we can end this year's video on a happier note. Redline once again closed the program, still flying, still a two ship. Ken Reader is joined by Sean Rosner. Enjoy this display and the fireworks that go with it. Until next time, from Airshow Stuff and from This Is Flight, thank you for joining us and goodbye for now.